Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, man, oh man, have I been waiting to make this video. Today is a very, very special day for the C5 Corvette. It's a video that you guys have all Ooh. been waiting for. Well, some of you have been waiting for, others have not. We're about to make the loudest C5 Corvette this side of the Mississippi. Good morning, my neighbors! Hey, fuck you! Yes! Probably not, but it's gonna be stupid loud. Today, we're finally installing headers on the C5 Corvette. I am hyped. So in memorandum, let's have our final cold start of the C5 Corvette with factory manifolds and factory catalytic converters and I don't have mufflers and factory H-pipe. Our, our final cold start of a legal car. <laughs> well, no, because I don't have mufflers. We started by loosening all the header bolts and getting the car into the air. So I'm gonna walk you guys through what we've done so far on the Corvette. We've just, I wanted to make sure I got everything loose and didn't run into any problems and was filming it and just have the video turn into a show. So up on the motor itself, we have the header studs. You can see them down there. There's one right there. So there's four on my driver's side and five on my passenger side. These were <laughs> surprisingly not very difficult to get out. I had been spraying them for a few days prior with PV Blaster to try to get them to loosen up. We did pull my alternator off of the mount and just put it to the side. We had to pull the serpentine belt, of course. And then one of the plug wires on this side, I had to unplug from the coil pack. I had to do the same thing on one or two on that side. Going down below the car, up here we had the exhaust flanges, two of the studs, did snap on us. And those required a 15 millimeter socket to get those ones off. And we had the help of some PD blaster. Next up, I have to remove the O2 sensors. They're a 22 millimeter. These were really, really tight. I sprayed them with some penetrating oil so that they didn't snap. So I've got those soaking with penetrating oil right now. Moving back a little bit, we have the exhaust hangers up there that are attached to springs. I already got those ones out. There's only two of them holding up the H pipe itself. And those ones were a 13 millimeter. And finally at the very back, I already removed both of the over axle pipes. These I believe were a 15 millimeter. I have the bolts right there. Just two bolts on each side. Those ones came out easy because of course, I put on the SLP loudmouth exhaust system just last year. So those bolts were pretty fresh, came out very easy. Now we're about ready to drop the, <laughs> well, drop the whole exhaust system. Of course, the manifolds are still connected. For now, we're gonna be able to drop the cats, the H pipe, and the over axle pipes in the back. Those can stay. Oh, still hold on. You want me to go up there and undo that? Is that like a hanger type thing? Yeah. It should be loose. There we go. All right, so the whole H pipe and the cats all the way to the back are out. Holy. <laughs> now we can go actually pull the manifolds themselves off. Maybe I'll sell these cats. Oh. Okay, so. Oh, I'm your genius, but there's another O2 sensor down here. There's another O2 sensor down there? That's what the two's for. It's the second one. There's another 2O2 sensor, so I didn't know there was four. I already pulled the two off that were behind the catalytic converters. Uh, there's two more. 
Where are they? They're on the head. Oh. Okay, so there's two more on the manifolds themselves. I couldn't see. Okay. But just. Well, I was asking what a catalytic converter is because I know people have been stealing them. And he says those things. And points out the thing. I'm like, who the hell? Oh, get the get the the I don't know, you make enough money for your crack. That's what the crack is. <laughs> uh, I think it's meth and heroin actually nowadays. Yeah, you're right. Crack, crack was the nice. <laughs> the last bolt up top is out, Ty. No, it's not loose. It's not wiggling at all? No, not even a little wiggly. Well, it's probably pretty seized on there. You think I should grab like a sludge or something? I would use a hand. Yeah, he's like a rubber mallet. All right, let me get a rubber mallet, and we're going to give it a couple of love. Speed it off. Speed it off, exactly. Just beat it. Beat it. Oh, no. <laughs> All right, beginning the beating. <laughs> Whack it off. <laughs> Any movement. Because there's not a lot of... Give it some oomph. There's not a whole lot of... Put some mustard on it. I'm a cinematographer. You don't want to be Alec Baldwin's cinematographer. Oh. Oh. Whoa, oh. we're going to have to cut that one. <laughs> <laughs> this is no working. <laughs> 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 He's an engineer. What do you think we should do now, Dave? Hit it as hard as you can. Play me a song with a hammer man. He's coming out, everybody. <laughs> Support him. <laughs> that was good. Jake's, Jake's entering now. <laughs> First time in a while. The stopping is making me uncomfortable. It's not being on your back underneath the car? Oh. Yeah, you're free. Oh, I'm out. I am free. I uh, accept. Hold on one second. I'm good at the withdrawal method. Alright, <laughs> 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 uh, bring it back up. I gotta get to. Where's your hat? <laughs> Find it. Oh, God. <laughs> there it is. Hello? <laughs> Hello? It's me. I'm gonna have to pull this first plug wire. That's fine. You gotta After all this time, you'd like to meet where? to go over everything. everything. I'm underneath the card, man. Do I really have to pee? It's so dark. <laughs> Get that out of here. Yep, we gotta pull that out. I might have to pull all these plug wires. All right, that should be good. The header is yours. Do you think it'll come out from the top easier? I mean, I saw the hole from the bottom. I don't no think way. it's gonna come through there. It's definitely not coming through the bottom. Uh, let me give it another whirl. I don't know if it's gonna come from the bottom. Right. That's what she said. <laughs> there it is. Voila, as easy as that. Flopian tubes. <laughs> we did it! It's a boy! <laughs> Just like one. Ooh. Headers. <laughs> Alright, headers yours. Um, I don't know if it's, I don't think it's gonna come out through the top. The last one did, didn't it? Yeah, this one's got the alternator on the side though. Yeah. Or actually, let me see if I can pull it straight up this way. One sec time. Okay, go ahead. You got some wire in your way. Let me have it. This is a nice turbo. That's the only kind of exhaust manifold you should install, is a turbo manifold. For me, a professional. <laughs> this did not come out. You can do it! I don't see how that's going to fit through that. Leave it alone, could ya? I got you headers. Got those out of here. Of course you did. Hold up. I gotta rotate it more. Okay. The far side for you. I gotta get it back down there. You're recording. You got this, right? Should I put it on my face? Definitely. <laughs> I'll just do a <laughs> selfie while it comes out. Obi's reaction to getting the headers out. Oh! Oh! The trident. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, now yes. the fun part, getting them back. Yes, yes, yeah. 
Let's go. Ah. No, that was the hard part, I think. Now it's time to put in the new ones. Take a look at these bad Larrys. It's Steel? shiny. It is shiny, and I'm getting it all dirty with my <laughs> disgusting hands. Uh, what do we want to start with the... Oh, wait, we need gaskets. Gaskets. We did start go with the... It's a good place to start. We did get the steel gaskets. Jake can't afford to buy us pizza today because he bought the steel the steel gaskets. <laughs> False. <laughs> paper ones. He couldn't afford that oh. either. Well, this, up to you. this is the x pipe. Because we're no longer going to have... Uh, we're no longer going to have cats. That's a super funny joke, yeah. Three-inch X-pipe. Three inches, just as big as we need. <laughs> that's bigger. Uh, that's close, but all of the clamps that we do not need because we're not using the clamps. Have heard great things about the clamps. Yeah, me either. Yeah, me, me either. Here's our new steel gaskets. Put that right there. I don't know what that is. I almost made a comment when he said to you while he was pulling up the pipe, like, stop fighting me for a second. I was going to be like, you guys probably should have said that a lot more times growing up. <laughs> stop fighting me for a second. Wait, yes. Oh, wait, maybe we don't need to be doing this. These are the multi-layer steel gaskets. What are they? Multi-layer steel. <laughs> gaskets? Multi-layer steel gaskets. Uh, they're better than the, um, the stock ones that it come with. Uh, these were extra. These were like thirty dollars extra, um, but I was told by multiple people to go with these ones. We're gonna throw these on first, and then we can get to throwing on the actual headers. Okay, so there is a sensor at the front of the block here. We did break that. Looks like it goes to the alternator. I'm not sure what that is, but I'm gonna focus on getting the new header in before I worry about the sensor, uh, because by now parts stores are closed. So we're gonna put the new header in now. Uh, get it all buttoned up, and then I'll focus on uh, on what that sensor is. <laughs> headers incoming! <laughs> we then put in the new headers, which definitely took some time to figure out the best way to do it. We ended up going through the bottom. install day two. It got pretty late last night. I got tired. I stopped working. We ran into a few little issues that uh, that I'll go over once we get back to the garage. I am on my way right now back from the parts store uh, because we needed to get an oil temperature sensor or coolant temperature sensor. I don't know what it's actually called, but we broke that when we were moving one of the manifolds, one of the stock manifolds, but luckily it was something they had in stock. We have the part now. We'll be back to the garage in a minute to go over what's what and where we're at. Here's what we're gonna do first. We're gonna replace, that right there is the coolant temperature sensor or oil temperature sensor, but here it is right here. I'm gonna replace that because I don't even think the car is gonna run without that in there. <laughs> Coolant temperature sensor is in. Now I'm gonna go ahead, torque all the bolts, all the header bolts down on both sides, get the alternator and the serpentine belt back on. My spark plug wires broke. Uh, go figure, just last year I put new ones in. Nice GM performance ones. They weren't cheap. And one broke. So instead of buying the cheap ones from either O'Reilly's or AutoZone, I'll just steal one of my brothers. I'm sure he won't miss it. Hmm, there we go. So now we're under the car and you do have to delete the rear O2 sensors with this system because you are putting an X pipe here and there's no longer any cats. So I was a little bit stumped on how you actually like get this out of the way. You just don't want it hanging here. Obviously the X pipe's gonna be here. It, it has to go somewhere. So all you have to do is, is pull on the harness. These little pins 
They're like steel pins. Hold the wiring harness all the way up. I already have that side done, you'll see. The harness just goes up there. And then up by your other O2 sensor, right up there you can see that little blue thing. That's where this O2 sensor plugs into. And you literally just disconnect it from there and it'll come free and, uh, and then you can do whatever you wish with it. All right, now both of the rear O2 sensors are finally out. That was a little bit more of a job than I was expecting, but here's a helpful hint. Don't put the new headers in until you remove these. I unfortunately didn't know how you remove these in the first place, so I got the headers in and, uh, and struggled with these for a lot longer than I should have. Special delivery. Now, the one complaint that there is about the speed engineering headers uh, is the quality of the clamps that they give you. People said that they leaked and stuff. So what I did, I don't know why they sent each one of these clamps in a separate box. So I literally had eight of these show up one day and I had no idea what they were. But I went with these exhaust clamps. They were on Amazon. I'll include a link for them down in the description below. They're heavy duty. They're two bolts as opposed to one. They're actually really, really nice quality. I've already used them when I started mocking up the bottom of the exhaust, though they aren't cheap. So you need eight of these for this whole system. Uh, so this was around a hundred bucks for all of these clamps. You could probably go to an exhaust shop and have them weld up the whole system and it would probably cost you one or $200, I'm sure. I like these because if I ever want to take pieces off and change them around, uh, then I don't have to cut and re-weld. This is easy, I can do it at home. They got phenomenal reviews, but as long as they seal and seal good, I'll be happy. And again, I'll include a link for the ones that I used down in the description below. Now I'm gonna go underneath the car because most of the front end is buttoned up. I just have to put back on the alternator and the serpentine belt. Now we're gonna go underneath the car. I'm gonna mock up the, uh, I don't know what you would call the pipes that go from the collector to the X pipe. And then I'll mock up the X pipe as well. We've got the X pipe and whatever you'd call those, the collectors, or I'm not sure what they're called. We have all that stuff mocked up. I have a jack stand with a board supporting the exhaust around the X pipe because um, there's no hanger for this area. The hanger, I believe we utilize right up there, the factory one. But as you can see, we have this gap between where our old exhaust is, or I shouldn't say old exhaust, where our over axle pipes are and where the X pipe ends. And for that, we go past our maze of clips. <laughs> Excuse me. We go past our maze of clamps to our old exhaust. So as you can see there, that's the factory H pipe with the factory hanger locations. And those two flanges bolt right up to the axle back under here. So what we're gonna have to do now is measure and cut so that that area can bolt up between the X pipe. Imagine the X pipe is here and then our axle back. Before we begin, I do want to give the uh, general disclaimer, talk to a doctor before doing this, see a therapist, uh, don't play with fire. I'm not a very smart person, uh, and I'm not good at measuring things and cutting them. Usually I measure things incorrectly, and I tell people the wrong length. So if you're going to do something along the lines of this, like cutting an exhaust, um, you might want to have a professional do it. All right, we got the pipes cut. <laughs> looks, looks beautiful, if I do say so myself. Uh, now we're gonna put them under the car and see if they actually fit. For the first time in my life, it's too long. So I think I'm gonna actually take the reducer off and uh, put it on this and then sort it out that way how much I have to trim. Right now we're gonna head to the store. I'm gonna get replacement gaskets for the back, um, the exhaust gaskets. Uh, I can't remember if I replaced them when I put on the SLP loudmouth cat back. For the price that they cost to replace, I'm just gonna get new ones uh, to ensure that there's no exhaust leaks. <laughs> got the new gaskets in place there. I have the whole exhaust mocked up with the clamps. They're not tightened yet. You'll notice on the back here, 
I did have to use the stock clamps or the not the stock clamps, the clamps that came with the speed engineering kit because the uh, Walker mega clamps that I got are too wide to fit in that spot. So hopefully those ones hold up okay. And now really, I'm gonna start at the front and tighten everything down to spec. And then as we move to the back, I'll try to align it best I can. I never really had straight exhaust tips to begin with. I don't wanna hear any funny comments about that, but I'll align it the best I can, make sure everything's tightened down. And then comes the moment of truth. Now there were a few problems that I ran into with the install. So to save you guys some time when you do this, um, I'll go over a few. So on the passenger side here, there's actually one, two, three, four, five bolts that hold on the factory manifold. One is actually underneath this air EGR thing. And on the driver's side, there actually is supposed to be a bolt all the way in the back there. But I learned that it looks like someone once tried to take the bolt out and it snapped, so they left it in the block. So I only have five on this side as opposed to six. On this side, I believe as well, there was uh, a bolt hiding underneath the EGR air thing uh, where you can't see. So if you're installing headers on your C5, look under this pipe when it's bolted to both sides of the engine there should be a bolt under there. Another thing, when you're installing the header from the bottom, it helps to remove, I don't know if you can see it up there. I think it's right on the edge of my fingertip right there. There it is right there. It helps to remove that ground wire from the block. It's bolted up right now where you can't see because the header's in the way. Unbolt that and get it out of the way. Uh, it makes it a lot easier. I think there's one other uh, wire that's that's bolted to the same spot on the block, I think it's a ground wire anyways. Remove that bolt, get that wire out of the way. It'll make it a lot easier to put in the driver's side. And on the passenger side, unbolt all the wires from your starter. It'll make it a ton easier to get the passenger side header up from the bottom. And I already went over with you guys uh, the benefits of using these clamps that I have uh, linked down in the description below. These things are awesome. I mean, look at how tight they seal. But the only problem that I ran into is uh, up here, where the cats usually are, there's all sorts of rooms. So you can swivel the clamps up out of the way. The bolts don't go up and hit anything. Up here, these ones did have to be at a slight angle. I couldn't put them all the way flush and out of the way. They're still pretty flush. You gotta watch out because the bolts, once the clamp is tight, get a little close to the, I don't know if that would be the bell housing. So just be careful for that. Then at the back. So this was a little interesting. On this side, I could get the clamp sideways up out of the way. Tons of room to spare. We're not even near, not even near the body of the car with those bolts. But on this side, you just couldn't, you couldn't swivel it up out of the way. I hate the way this looks right now. I think it looks terrible. So I don't know, I might try to find a different way to put this one. I aligned the exhaust as best I could in the tunnel, but I still have a ton more room on this side than I do on this side. I spent so much time on this. I just wanted to get it done and over with. The exhaust isn't hitting anything. Nothing is touching places that it shouldn't, but I hate the way that looks. I might bring this to a muffler shop eventually. I might see if they can align this somehow. For a professional, I'm sure it's not that hard to do, but I tried to shimmy this stuff around. I'm really not proud of that, but, uh, but I want to show you guys that I'm not perfect. I make mistakes. I'm not a professional at this. So if you run into the same problem, now you know that you're not the only one. And at the back, I had to use the speed engineering clamps that they give you because the clamps that I got, like these ones, were too wide to fit in that area. So I did have to use the speed engineering clamps. I broke both of them when installing. 
uh, because I don't know if you can see, there should be a little piece of metal. You can see one half of it's still up there. Those both broke when I tried to apply any sort of torque to them, but the exhaust isn't leaking there. I don't think I'm probably gonna research and try to find a stronger clamp uh, that's single bolt style because that's the only kind that's gonna fit in that area. Quick chicken, <clears throat> quick chicken patty break. And then it's time to fire this up and see if there's any leaks. I can't believe we made it. Battery's connected. Oh my God, it's time to start it up. I feel like I've been waiting weeks for this. I don't even know what to say. We've created a monster. Uh, it's way louder than I expected. There is no way that the camera is picking up any bit of the, the noise that this thing creates. It sounds like a full on NASCAR now. The EGR, uh, this air system right here. I don't know what it's called. The, yeah, I think it's called the air system or the EGR. It's on both sides and um, the speed engineering headers do not have provisions to put that back on. But I read a few forums. It looks like you just either block off this section uh, on each side. There's a little plate that goes there or else you actually dig back into there, cut it, block it off there. I guess there's an air pump underneath the front of the car here under the driver's side headlight. I guess there's an air pump under there that you can also go in, cut off, kind of remove. I'm gonna look into that and do it in another video. I know that this is gonna have to be tuned. So Alex from Grand State Dino, if you're watching this, hey. I know this thing's gonna have to be tuned and I'm sure it can be tuned whether I have that blocked off just like it is now or if I actually dig in and remove this stuff. But again, I'm gonna do that in another video because it does look like a little bit of work. And, uh, and this video is about the header. But what we do have to do now is there is some wiring um, that's touching the headers in some spots. You definitely won't be able to see way down there. There's a few wires that are just barely touching the headers and these things got hot with the 30 seconds that I had it running. So I really wanna keep all the wiring away from the headers, just like they were kept away from the exhaust manifold. So that's what we're gonna do now. Well, that is gonna be a wrap for today's project. And I lie will I say today because this has taken two days. It's actually taken a little bit over two days. In total, I don't know what I have invested in this hour wise. You guys gotta remember, I'm not a mechanic. I'm merely an idiot with a camera who thinks he's funny. I ran into snags along the way with this. I had a few problems, not with any of the equipment or the parts that I used, uh, just knowledge. There's stuff that I should have done first and then second and then third and I messed up the order. Again, not a professional. I just like to try to tackle these projects myself. Um, it, it, it does give you a good feeling when you complete a project like this, especially one that kicks your ass at times. But the end result, when I'm driving around, it feels good to know that, you know, I did that. Once again, I wanna give a massive heartfelt thank you to 269 Motorsports. Guys, support those who support me. I can't thank 269 Motorsports enough for their support on this project and for hooking me up with the speed engineering headers. Again, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much. I'm, I'm truly blessed to be in this opportunity and to have such supporters as I do. So guys, if you're in the market for a set of headers, if you guys want the same exhaust that I do, or if you need any other LS parts, go check out 269 Motorsports, support those who support Drive Hub, check them out, give them a like on Facebook. And if you're in need of any LS parts, check them out first. And a big thank you to everyone else who continues to support the channel. 
I may not always reply to every comment, but I see them. I see you guys that keep commenting on every video. And again, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for the support. This year has been absolutely wild. I've done stuff that I couldn't imagine in my dreams. So you guys are allowing me to do this and allowing me to, to, to do this as a job, as a career. So this is absolutely mind blowing. And to each and every one of you, thank you. So if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Let me know down in the comments what you guys would like to see next on the C5 Corvette. There will be a follow-up video with more exhaust clips of the exhaust with the headers, flybys, high revs. We'll go out and do some crazy stuff with it. But for now, I'm Beat. Subscribe for more content with the C5 Corvette and a plethora of other insane vehicles. But I will see you guys in the next one. Happy motoring.